Dr. Ben Bickman, what your doctor should know about insulin's role in your disease. Dr. Bickman is on Michaela Peterson's podcast number 43 on her YouTube channel from December 2020. Metabolic syndrome, as I mentioned, is a constellation of five disorders. And over the years, there have been a few kind of rolling definitions of it. But the consensus has settled on these five. Let's see if I can rattle them off. One is elevated blood pressure, so hypertension. Second, elevated glucose levels. Third, elevated waist circumference, so central obesity or adiposity. And then the fourth and fifth are kind of related, which is just sort of bad blood lipids. And specifically, they break mm -hmm. them up into two, elevated triglycerides and low HDL. When we look at it as insulin resistance syndrome, now we understand the origins of these problems. If someone is insulin resistant, they will have elevated triglycerides. They will have lower HDL. If they're insulin resistant, they will have higher glucose and higher blood pressure. And the central obesity can both be cause and consequence of the insulin resistance itself. But altogether, those constellation of disorders it is it are much more derivative or more accurately described as consequences of insulin resistance rather than just a vague, uh, you're not metabolically fit. A physician gets paid to see patients. That's the job of, of the physician. I'm a scientist. Uh, I get paid to ask questions. Now, I don't get paid as well. It's not as lucrative to be curious um, as seeing patients, but that does mean I can sit back and say, how does hypertension um, have a metabolic origin? Why is it part of the metabolic syndrome? Oh, it's because of the insulin doing this and doing that. Um, throughout the body, at blood vessels, at the adrenal glands, it's affecting the way the body's behaving with regards to its blood volume and blood pressure. And so th that's, I know that. And so my greatest, my most favorite um, audience is actually when I get to go give talks at clinics about these kinds of things. I love speaking to nurses and doctors and hospital administrators with no ego. It is not my ego that drives that interest. It's because there's a genuine delight on my part to think this is the way it ought to be. There ought to be the scientists in the lab, the boring yeah. kind of their version of white coats, finding answers to questions. They convey those answers to the actual practitioners who are on the front lines doing, doing all kinds of, you know, wonderful things, but they, they don't get paid to sit back and kick up their feet in their desk, look out their window and ask themselves these questions. I certainly feel frustration in my own right with how people look at type 2 diabetes yeah. and, and where the, the average clinician will look at type 2 diabetes as completely a glucose problem. And they'll say, your glucose is too high and they won't have any awareness of insulin. Insulin's not even on their radar. Um, but the tragedy in this situation is as someone's oh. developing insulin resistance, as the audience now knows, their insulin is high. But the insulin is enough. There's enough function of the insulin that it's able to keep the glucose at normal. And so the patients coming in, they get diagnosed with PCOS or, or, or hypertension or fatty liver disease, and they're not even looking at the insulin. If they did, they'd see that it's much higher. It's only years later that now the body's become so resistant to its insulin that now the glucose starts to climb. Wow. And then they detect the problem. And they say, ah, well, you have type 2 diabetes now. And the tragedy doesn't end there. But that's the first tragedy is that by looking at type 2 diabetes as a glucose disease, we detect it too late, potentially decades later. If we'd looked at it as an insulin disease, we would detect it much, much sooner. And... Second, if we looked at it as an insulin disease, we would treat it better because the tragedy in type 2 diabetes is the type 2 diabetic has very high insulin and very high glucose. But because we look at it as a glucose disease, the physician will say, well, let's just give you more insulin. Let's put you on insulin therapy or give you drugs that will push up your insulin. And they might not even know what the insulin is, but it works to lower the glucose. And so if this were just a glucose disease, we would say, well, we've solved the problem. But the reality is when we give a type 2 diabetic insulin and they already have high insulin, which they always do in type 2 diabetes, then we make them fatter and sicker and we kill them faster. Their risk of dying from heart disease triples. Their risk of dying from cancer doubles. Their risk of getting Alzheimer's doubles. We are killing them by giving them insulin. But kind of to your point, the cynical view that I somewhat share, conventional medicine would just say, you can continue to eat high carbohydrate yeah. diets. In fact, eat every two hours. Just make sure you cover it with insulin. That is an asinine perspective. It is killing patients when we put a type 2 diabetic on insulin and tell them to eat what they want and just cover it with insulin, it's a wonderful way to sell more insulin.
but it's a terrible way to help a patient get better. If we look at it as an insulin centric or through an insulin centric paradigm, then we say, all right, you have chronically high insulin. How can we lower your insulin? You know what? Eat less carbs. You don't have to go zero carb to do this. Just eat less carbs. We published a paper, a clinical case study with a, a clinic here in my area, and we took 11 middle-aged women with type 2 diabetes, full-on type 2 diabetes, and we put them on a, a – they had an option. When they were in that clinical visit, having just been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, the option was you leave with a drug prescription – the consequence of which will be that you have to continue to take that drug forever and you'll likely have higher and higher doses of it. Or you have a, a, a nutritional prescription, if you will, and it's going to be the, the simple rules that I outlined earlier. Control carbs, focus on protein and fat. And within 90 days, these 11 women but were part of the case study. They elected to follow the low-carb, even ketogenic diet. And within 90 days, they had nary a whiff of diabetes. Their glucose was totally normal. Mm. They had lost 20 pounds. Their blood pressure had come down by any definition of the disease, we we had cured it, which is a term you're not supposed to use with type 2 diabetes. You're not supposed to say you cure it because if you just use drugs to solve the problem, well, you never will. You will never cure it. 